Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Great. Uh, welcome to the Meet the Deb in Technical Committee um, BOF, or talk, whatever that is. Uh, we plan to have a short uh, reminder of what exactly the Deb in Technical Committee is, and I'll start with presenting the actual members. Um, so we have uh, Andreas Bart to my left. Uh, Don Armstrong is unfortunately not at DebConf. Uh, we have Keith Packard, uh, myself, Odix. Uh, I'm the current chair of the Technical Committee. Uh, Tolef Foghin, Sam Hartmann, and Hello. Phil Hens. Hello. Um, I'll start with uh, what is the Debian Technical Committee actually. It's all written in the Debian Constitution, which is the Bible you should have by your bed. And read it from time to time. It's useful for getting along in the project. So 6.1 says the co Technical Committee may decide on any matter of technical policy. It may decide any technical matter where developers' jurisdictions overlap and make a decision when asked to do so. That's basically tie-breaking. It may overrule a developer with a 3-1 majority. That's the nuclear weapon we have. We don't use it much. It's the last resort point. And 615 says we, we may offer, offer advice for the project or for any question, basically. Uh, we are limited in, in these powers by some of the some constraints, amongst which we have to have public discussion and decision making. Uh, we cannot do detailed design work, and we make decision only as last resort. Constitutionally, we are picking options. That means we are asked to break ties be amongst available options. After all efforts to resolve it via consensus have been tried and failed. And we can make, offer advice and make our views known. That means we can offer you advice if you want. After all that uh, uh, constitutional thing, we can say the Devon Technical Committee is a self-nominated and DPL appointed last resort conflict resolution and advice providing body. Any questions so far? I know it was quick, but you might, you all know that, so let's move on. Um, it was traditional of the um, technical committee talk to have a short review of the past issues that we had in the, um, in the TC since the previous TEPCONF. Uh, they are all listed under the tech TTTE uh, pseudo bug uh, list, and we try to have everything we are publicly discussing there. We have actually decided on two, six issues. Uh, I won't read all of them, but um, there were two that made it into a GR which, on which we voted in March about the supermajority fix and duplicate se section numbering. Uh, we had one on the menu system. Uh, we had one discussion about how we want to appoint the technical committee chair. Uh, we did make it a constitutional change. We just adopted it as an internal procedure. Uh, we have uh, proposed Phil for uh, nomination to Neil as DPL back then. Uh, and we have voted for the CTT chair. Um, we also had four issues that, we, that were dropped or retracted in the last year. Uh, there was the coordinate plan and requirements for cross pool chain packages in Debian. We, some weeks ago, we decided to drop that issue from our list. Um, yeah. We also had two other things uh, concerning how the TC works itself. So the introduction of a formal closure vote and the uh, change in the constitution to permit us to hold private conversation, which we dropped by saying it's already permitted and we make use of that right. And there was a discussion between the OpenSSL maintainer and the stable release managers about uh, new OpenSSL option versions, which found its way outside of the TC. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we have currently only one open issue, that is new technical committee members. 
Which brings me to the next point. We're looking for new members. Um, as an introduction for, for this, um, we have adopted uh, two or three years ago in the Constitution a new thing about ter term expiry, which says on January 1st of each year, well, you can read it, basically it says the term lasts three and a half years, uh, roughly, and it's a small set of conditions. So we can see here the list of the expiry dates, kind of, expiry years, in order, that means that uh, we will be uh, losing Andreas and Don by the end of this year, uh, Keith next year, um, Tolef and myself in 18, and then Sam and Phil in 19. That means we need fresh blood. We're roughly looking for at least one new member. Werewolf! <laughs> <laughs> for tonight's skating. <laughs> We're roughly looking for at least one new member per year. Uh, it's between one and two, but if we, if we can at least have one new member per year, it can be sustainable. Not all issues are like 72, 77, 08. <laughs> no, 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 most not. It's the only so, one. Um, I will tell you that the most the, the, the work I've done on the technical committee that I'm really proudest of uh, was something that took me one evening. Um, and basically, someone had written to the technical committee really frustrated um, because the release manager didn't accept a patch, patch and they believed that, that their so without that patch, their software would be um, something that, that they couldn't maintain. Um, and they basically you know, were really frustrated about this and like, how could this come about? How could the release manager not care? I took some time because the release managers are pretty busy and so I'm not a release manager but I can talk about you know the the, the trade-offs here and said look you know the, the release manager has to make some trade-offs and it's absolutely fine for you to say well if you won't take this patch you're gonna need to find someone else to maintain that software in the release because I don't want to do the work Debian you know we're volunteers um, but it's also fine for the release manager without saying you're a bad person or anything like that to say um, I don't trust the risk of this patch. And being able to write that up and, and kind of explain that situation is the thing that was, is I think so far my best contribution to the technical committee. And that was really easy and I think was helpful. I don't know whether it was helpful to the individual person, but several other people have come and, and read that and said, ah, that was actually a really useful thing to think about the issues involved there. Well, ac actually, I mean, I'm one of the survivors of the bug uh, mentioned before. Um, I, I think I need to say it this way. And most issues that we had are really not that bad, but rather people had some misunderstanding and needed some external help to, yes, to make them speaking together, or even some cases where it was just an honest split up between maintainers who said, we, yeah, we could go this way or that way, but we just can't come to an agreement and just make a decision please now for us, which is fair for me because nobody will get hurt if you say, we just disagree, but we know we can take both ways, but we need an external uh, somebody who makes a decision. That's not that bad. So yes, this was a single bad uh, bug that we had. Uh, I think you all know that. Uh, but the normal cases in the committee are way better. And um, yeah, so we had this one. I don't think we had any of that kind ever before since the committee was set up, which means since the constitution was written, so perhaps we have another one in 15 years, so you could volunteer now and be out of office <laughs> before it happens. It's getting quick. <laughs> wow, we're so friendly. <laughs> so what, what, what we can say about the TC work is it's about disagreements and conflicts. It's at the broad technical level. One thing we can say is that we are not all kernel hackers. Uh, I don't code in C all day, if, if at all. Um, it's about listening to what people have to say. Um, I ha had initially written that sentence by saying talking to people, but it's actually less talking and more listening. Sometimes taking hard decisions, we're one of the bodies with some powers in, in, in the Debian constitution, and it's essentially political. So the required skills, skill set sorry, we are looking for is people with empathy, Technical agility, the ability to take a look at the problem you haven't seen before and take a distant look and global look at whether it's sane or not. 
someone that might that you might consider as your mentor would be a good uh, person for to join the TC, for example. We're also looking for people that are reactive, that can answer in mails in what we said one week, yes. <laughs> at least read yeah. read the mails in one week. Some social sensitivity and um, cool-headed. It is crucial for the TC to be representative of the developers. We are really trying to expand, to have the TC be a, uh, an accurate representation of everyone that is acting in the project. Uh, it used to be uh, Northern American white males. It has changed to some extent. <laughs> Native English speaker. I, I think we had at least one uh, long-term uh, a TC member who would heavily disagree with them just by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're looking for to become more diverse. So we need nominees. Uh, one of our problems is that we had multiple calls for TC nominees and we didn't have like 25 people amongst which we could pick. It was hard for us to get enough nominees. Uh, so nominate yourself if you feel it's interesting for you or could be interesting for the project. Nominate anyone you could see at that position because they might not have thought of nominating themselves. And being nominated by someone else can make this person also wonder, well, I hadn't thought about that before, but okay, it might be interesting. And come talk to us. If you have worries, questions or else that are about the TC itself, issues in front of the TC or whether you might be interested to work within or with us, uh, within the TC or with us. We're just developers. As I, as I said before, uh, we're not special in any way, and uh, we're here to help. Um, so, in particular on that, I'd like to say that I think it's better if you contact the TC at a point where you're still engaged in the process, where you're still constructively engaged with all the parties, than where you're so frustrated you're no longer talking. Um, that, yeah, no, I mean, you know, if, if you're going to be able to work things out and you don't need us, that's great. But um, we would rather get involved at a point where people are starting to realize, hey, this is thorny, than at a point where I'm never talking to that other person again. Um, that said, if we have to get involved in a situation where you're willing to talk to us, but, you know, communicating with some of the other parties is challenging, we'll deal with that. But we would have rather been involved sooner, I think. It's certainly easier to do it and, and have the decision at the end be something that we're all happy with. Um, one thing that I think is... Uh, when I, oh, okay, I'm the tea boy in this group. I only just arrived. Um, <laughs> uh, How are you getting us coffee then? Well, I, I closed the bugs, right? I closed all the bugs. So, okay, anyway. Fair enough. <laughs> so, before turning up here, you know, it's very easy to say, well, they're some sort of gods that we go to in supplication to sort out our problems. Uh, the thing that becomes instantly apparent when you're sitting on this side of the table is that if there's an argument that's gone on long enough for people to start spilling blood, then the, uh, the subject experts are definitely not on this side of the table. They just don't agree. So when they have to explain to us what's going on, it's going to take some time because we're coming to the party late and they are already carrying so many assumptions with them that they, you must know this because I've been concentrating on it for two years. Everybody must have heard about it. Well, probably we don't. So if you leave a situation to go sour enough so it's going to be ruled on by the technical committee, there's a pretty good chance that it won't actually, it's, it won't be completely clear to us instantly that you are right. And that means you've got a good chance of not getting what you want. So if you can sort it out yourselves first, great. If you want to come to us and have it mediated so that you don't have to start stabbing one another, that's even better. Um, I'm out for, I'll just continue and then we can have the lively discussion also about that, but I have more slides. 
Um, <laughs> not, not many. Uh, about the recruiting process, uh, we're also looking into ways to improve it uh, because we had announcements. We didn't really announce a time span and um, we are looking into announcing something like the DPL election saying this is the period where we expect nominations, this is the period where we will run the internal discussions and vote and then we expect the DPL to be able to have a decision by that date. And if we don't have enough candidates, then we just wait another year and we run another session. Something like that. It's not being decided. Um, so we are having uh, informal and internal discussions, uh, mostly on IRC and by discussing with each other. Um, one very important thing that has improved but is not perfect yet is the TC responsiveness. Uh, both internally and externally, how we respond to mails, just mails on the bugs and how we uh, are progressing together towards resolution on, on some issues. Also, we're discussing our ability to pick options in a timely manner. Um, for some of the past issues, it would have been beneficial to pick any of the available options and picking any of the two options would have been better than letting the time go and not picking, even if the picked option wouldn't have been the best, but picking is better than not picking. And we are wondering about the amount of issues. We don't have any other than recruiting currently, so we currently have few issues to solve. And we're wondering if this is in any way an indicator of the health of the project. Um, if people are not having cl conflicts, is maybe they're not talking to each other or no one is doing anything anymore, or it's just that everything's happened smoothly. We don't know. And we are also kind of worried about the time we spend on recruitment, having to find one or two members per year and not having any other issues than that is not really useful work for the TC to conduct. Uh, so that's it. We are now to the point for Q&A, open discussion. We started to dive in some of the things already, but the stage is yours. <coughs> or we can have another coffee break. <laughs> Any questions? Any nominations? <laughs> so, so it's now either questions or nominations. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we could just go to both doors and then we can see who gets out. <laughs> <laughs> Well volunteered. I think it's decent. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I hear there's a guy behind me who's going to be interested. I didn't hear this. He said there's a guy behind him. Ah. So, is that a nomination? So, I, I can see here one. I think it was serious question. Um, I think start. it would probably yeah. be best if people are only nominated themselves in public like this. So, okay. <laughs> okay. I was going to no, uh, <laughs> then I, I think really, I mean, we had, we, we, we should get those questions because yeah. it was really good the last year when we finally started with some. So, so how many nominations did you get for the last um, call? Mm. We got, <coughs> I remember correctly, I think we got seven. Seven. Well, seven. Yes, about. Okay. Amongst the seven, <laughs> yeah. But I think it's also... I wish we would choose to disclose how many accepted. Yes, yeah, so, uh, but from the seven, mo I think most didn't accept. Yeah. So we have a lineup with very few candidates, and of those, uh, yeah, we, had, we, had, we finally managed to pick someone up. <laughs> <laughs> I am the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is so not true. So. <laughs> not everybody's good at running, you know. <laughs> Uh, in, in terms of actual time commitment, I, I don't think we touched on that, but we're looking at about an hour a week. So it's not a huge time commitment. Of course, if you know something huge happens, then that might explode. But in, in general, we're we're not looking for somebody to have this as you know a twenty five percent job. Or even less. Yeah, I mean, you just need to be able to keep up with the mail and 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 well oh, and. Or if, if the times when you're not keeping up, do especially do not both fail to keep up and then raise last minute objections. <laughs> That's wow, does that you know get frustrated quickly? So I think we have another question. Hi, hi. Uh, can you uh, quantify a bit more about the improvement in responsiveness? It sounds like it's an interesting balance between 
the uh, cool headedness aspect, having things cool down a bit versus uh, just waiting until things uh, resolve themselves. Yeah. Basically, it's just what what what, what Tolif just said. I mean, read your mails and answer in a, in a timely manner. That's all. Because uh, both was, and also what Sam said, it's not helpful if if we get mail and we can't get an answer because nobody reads the mail within one or two months. So yes, read your mail, answer to it. If you have questions, ask questions. Uh, nobody says you need to respond within five minutes, but being normally able to respond to mail within a week might be quite helpful. It was also the question of acknowledgement, is that we as a body have to progress together towards a common understanding of, of what the problem is and what possible solution could be. And our responsiveness problems were like someone spends some time writing a long mail about his findings, etc., and gets basically no acknowledgement because we all act as we all act in on mailing lists. Like we don't send one mail saying plus one or I agree, which is as a body something we now seem to need because then you write this long mail and you don't s you need a way to, to, to see that the rest of the body actually agrees with you or disagrees with you. Yeah. Well, yeah, but yes, we are just discussing that right now. It's actually going to be plus one males, roughly. <laughs> so, um, I would prefer questions by the microphone, that, that the video is recording is there, and I think Gunnar has the next one. I was just wondering, several years ago, I don't remember who, who proposed this, impact, but uh, some people that have run for DPL have uh, advocated that as part of their platform they would uh, call for a social committee because well the technical committee should be focused on the technical work but well now you, you say that a big part of your work is actually social so I mean uh, it's not, not so much of a question the answer is obvious but uh, maybe for the more long-running uh, people of, um, among you what uh, do you think that led to that impression to somebody that was running for a DPL? Um, I'm not speculating on other people's DPL platforms, um, especially not if it's recorded. Um, but otherwise, um, I mean, really, I mean, we are not the chief architects of the Debian board checks. That's not we, what we are. That's not what we are good at. Uh, some of us might be chief architects in our work, but that's something else. Uh, so, and it, I mean, it's not true both for the committee and. As uh, some of you know, I've been long-term release team member, uh, both there. It's not that you have to make final, t great technical decisions so everybody says, oh yes, that's really great, we never have thought of it, but people come to you with problems, they say, oh, we don't know how to do it, we don't know how this RC bug to fix, we, d we have a disagreement about the maintenance status, do we ca can we accept the patch, is it too risky? And then what you do don't do is, you don't go and say, oh yeah, I look at the patch and my decision, final decision is, this is this, but just say, okay, why do you believe it's this way, why do you this other believe the other way, and come to a result which everybody makes happy, so it's lots about Speaking, it's necessary to be able to understand the technical things behind, because if you say, oh, patch, what is it? It doesn't help, uh, obviously. But so it's more about speaking with people about technical issues. And that's basically in, <clears throat> in all of that, let's say, high-level technical things in Debian, you need to make sure that the people speak to each other. So yes, this is something social, but the social thing about how to get on technically. It's not about, oh, I was feeling uh, somebody was, uh, was uh, treating me unfairly last night at the Mao game, so now I need some whatever. That's not, not our purpose, but if uh, something says, I don't understand why I've always my patches are refused, yes, please come to us. That's one of, of our duties. I, I think we also changed our understanding as members. We also changed our understanding what the TC work is. And it, we are, I think, progressing towards more. That's also why it reflects in the skill set we're looking for. It's also very much social work. And um, we're g going in that direction, which makes the idea of a social committee kind of useless because we become that, basically. Well, or I mean, we, our, our understanding moves into that direction. I mean, we will never be uh, a committee that decides on like, balancing social, like balancing, um, say, non-technical aspects of balancing our users versus the free software community. But, is, but, but when it has a technical implication, we can give input. I also think that the uh, entire Debian project has, over the last five to ten years, maybe even more, and gained an understanding that a lot of 
of the problems which we're trying to fix are actually, they're about communication, they're about the people, they're much more about that than they are about actually fixing a particular technical problem. So, and, and I think that it's, it's basically just a reflection of the project as a whole, more than it is a, something that, that the technical committee has gone out and, and done on its own. This is, yeah. And perhaps also to say, so example, whenever the member platform is running something in 2005, 2006, uh, and I think that very interesting discussion at these times with the DPA candidates, uh, more or less the technical committee was, let's say, had a few members who were not so active anymore. So we had a, uh, we had a hard time to get them to resign from the committee because we co even couldn't get enough votes for them to expel them from the committee anymore. So that was then fixed. We had a few new uh, members added. Uh, that was uh, Steve and me, uh, later on uh, Colin as well. And so we get the committee from, um, they don't even look at bugs and don't work to, yes, now it works. Uh, we solved some issues, we did some, some better, some not as good. Uh, I mean, long-term observers could remember that, but so we really got, got the committee to working again. And back at that time, I think also it was the first start of, oh yes, Deppin isn't only about technical decisions, there's something else in, uh, which, uh, which also changed the way the DPL interacts, uh, or some of the DPL interacts. Um, we managed to get um, uh, getting uh, migrated from, um, we have to, uh, CFTP masters who occasionally also do releases and just uh, shout out, oh, now it's frozen and released, to something uh, like we have a release team now with multiple members. So there were a lot of changes in the project as a whole. Um, I'm trying, I'm just pointing on, or just painting a bit uh, exaggerated picture, of course, but yes, the project changed a lot in the last, whatever, 10 years, and I think in a good way. Any more? Don't be afraid if you don't bite. So, and just as a, as a, to hope to start some discussion, one thing we'd love to hear about now or later is if there are things we ought to be looking at, if there are issues that are starting to boil up that maybe we should care about, that would be a great thing to tell us. If no one has problems, then good. Continue the good work. Yeah, um, I want to add what Zobel just said. Uh, it's not so much of a question, but being on a technical committee seems like an extremely thankless job. So I guess I just want to say thank you for all your hard work. <laughs> One question there. So in terms of um, what you're saying of that now the committee sees its role not purely as answering technical points, but also thinking about the social factors behind them, um, do you think there can sometimes be a contradiction between those two things, though? Because maybe on the technical side, it could sometimes be that you can very quickly say, well, this is the right answer. Um, I know not on certain bugs, but in some cases, but it could be that there's actually a deeper social problem that is the real issue at stake. And that, um, so I mean, imagine someone, one person is technically right, but actually they've been really socially bad in pushing that side. How do you see the, the kind of deal between the two things to sort out what would you? Well, I I if there's an obvious technical correct solution, then one of our roles would be to socialize that appropriately and, and say, yes, this person is being a total jerk but they actually are right, right? And that would be, that would be a, a responsibility that we would have in that case, is to, is to, is to balance the, choose the technically, technically correct solution, but to socialize it in a way that people can, under, can, uh, can begin to accept it, that the, uh, separate the technical issue from the social issue and solve them, and try to solve both of them in our, in our response. So whereas, whereas you might think that the only thing we would say is, oh, we're gonna pick the technically correct solution. No, that, that can't be the entire response. It might be the answer that we provide, but the response needs to also uh, acknowledge the, the social issues going on. And so that you would, you would balance those two not by choosing the technically incorrect solution, but by, uh, by having the response acknowledge the social issues as well. And um, also, I mean, uh, in lots of cases when the uh, conflict has been long growing, there's and there's some personal tension, it's often easier to not get some answers, this is the right solution from the person 
uh, who is always sitting you bad, but from some independent body who said, okay, it's reviewed, we heard all of the reasons for both sides, and we came to, the, to see that this really looks better because of this and that. It's an easier to take than of the person who is going on your nerves for whatever the last two years. So that might also help. Any other questions? You're all hungry? <laughs> One more. I think uh, if you've ever tried explaining why you've got a tangly bug to someone and then just fixed it, I think that's also a role that we can have, is that if there's an awful bug where neither side can agree and they explain it to us, then one of them might go, oh, uh, bye, never mind. <laughs> So I will say I have pondered standing for tech, you know volunteering for tech committee multiple times over the years, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, it, I think it well essentially yes um, no it's it's one of the important things that I think we actually do need to um, spread and cover um, represent more of the body of of the Debian contributors um, in yep. total. I mean. I'm one, of, I'm one of the old guard, as, as my wife keeps on telling me I'm getting old. <laughs> um, you know, I've done all kinds of other jobs in Debian. I think I could help, but I would much rather see other people with different experiences and viewpoints represented as well. So um, I guess I have just kind of volunteered, haven't I? Um, I would rather, if, if you're desperate this year, then yeah, count me in, but I would rather see other people step up first. Um, that's I mean, basically exactly what I said when I volunteered. Because, and it, it was only on the was it second or third call for volunteers, having thought about it for six months. Because you know, look at look at me. Okay, I'm wearing wearing a skirt. That's almost <laughs> diverse, but <laughs> not really. <laughs> no. But no, yeah, that's no. Well. But I mean, so I correct me if I'm wrong. Have we ever had a female TC member? We, uh, we, we had we had multiple. Um, proposals of females, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think ever one of them even accepted to be nominated. Uh, I even think we had the same person more than once. Um, so yes, I think there are well good female potential members of the committee, uh, however, if they don't agree to be, yeah, what can we do? Uh, on the other hand, if you think some, uh, something like that, and I can fully understand that, you can all say I nominate myself, but please prefer someone from a different uh, group than me, and me on this last resort. That's okay with us. Uh, we will then only pick the person if we have don't any other uh, acceptable nominees. So, I mean, one thing to consider um, is that there's a lot of research that suggests that there are some groups that are... Um, that are more likely to self-nominate than other groups. Um, we find, uh, at least as my understanding of the research, we actually find the TC composition is very consistent um, with groups that are fairly commonly uh, willing to self-nominate. So one of my advice to, to people who are willing to stand um, themselves but who uh, would like to see more diversity is to go, in addition to volunteering yourself, um, go spend an hour or two thinking about who would be good candidates who would be more diverse and nominate them. And possibly even copy them on your nomination and let them know that you think they would be great and why. Because sometimes that can actually be enough to help someone get over that hump and accept a job. The, this diversity thing is, is, is both our responsibility because we pick from the nominees, but it's very much the, whole, the responsibility of all the developers also to, to give us enough names. And you all know more people than we all, all know only. And uh, we need your ideas of, of people that would be good for the TC. And think wild. I mean, anyone that, that, that has interesting social skills uh, in, t in, in discussions in online that you have to thought, yeah, well, that's an interesting thought. That's a good way to, to, to um, tone a conflict down. Well, maybe just push them a little and dominate them for the TC. Uh, just as a slight adjustment to what Sam just said, rather than CCing the person that you're nominating, I think you should tell us that you want to CC them, because then people can opt out of being spammed about a thousand times by everybody in the project. Having if there if there happened to be someone that says there's absolutely no circumstance under which I'm going to do it, then 
having their mailbox filled is not going to be helpful, so we can just filter that. So if you want to CC them, don't say, don't actually do it, just say, I'm very happy for this to be published to the nominee and we'll do it. Uh, okay, I'm not no, sure I'm, I'm not agreeing <laughs> with that. I'm, I'm actually, I, I need to disagree a bit on that because basically <laughs> the nominee's mails are not sent to the project mailing list but rather to a private place because especially if you could send a nomination to public list but no, if no, you nominate no. someone, if someone so, else... So if in the mail you so say, and I'm happy for this to be forwarded. So, so, so then yes, but well, yeah, but, but really, if if if, if, if yeah, it's private mail, it. just do it as it works. But I've seen the five minute sign, so I think we, uh, I think the, the good suggestion is ma uh, make sure that you know how many people you would like to see in the comment here, also from a diversity point of view. I think that's an important thing. And the other, you see, might be a diff bit different, but yeah, do it like you think it's correct. As always, exercise the best judgment. Last uh, words from anyone? <laughs> if not, then... So be before we do the closing, I would like to thank you all uh, for the trust that you had in me as member of the committee. This is now my last year here, standing here. Next year, I will, I'm happy to join B-Dale. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for the support that we got uh, and the trust that at least most of you had. I think I get less bad emails than other people in the project in a recent decision. Um, but anyways, so thank you and I wish you all and the fu future members of the committee that you are yeah, going forward in a, in a good way. Thank you.